take a look at this picture. This is supposed to be a train car and a person is on the train car walking forward. This arrow here represents the train moving forward at 20 miles per hour and this arrow here represents the person walking forward at 4 miles per hour. So he's walking in the same direction the train is moving. The question we ask is how fast is the man moving? Well your answer to that question depends on the frame of reference or the point of view. If our frame of reference is the train, we say that he's moving at 4 miles per hour relative to the train. So if you're standing here inside the train, for example, watching him, relative to you or from your point of view, he's moving at 4 miles per hour. This gap between the two of you is being closed at a speed of 4 miles per hour. The 20 miles per hour is irrelevant because you and he both are on the train car and you see him moving relative to the train car or relative to you. But if you're standing out here on the tracks, or let's say you're standing out here beside the tracks, not on the tracks. So here you are and you're watching the train approach. Now how fast is this man moving relative to you here? Well, the train's going by at 20 miles per hour and in addition to that he has this extra four miles per hour of speed forward so relative to you he's moving at 24 miles per hour we could say that the man is moving at 24 miles per hour relative to the ground or with respect to the ground so if your frame of reference is the ground and that would be the case if you were standing here on the ground then the answer to the question how fast is he moving would be 24 miles per hour now in most everyday situations the reference frame is obvious when we say that a car is moving at 60 miles per hour what we typically mean is that it's moving at 60 miles per hour relative to the road when we say that a ship is traveling at 20 knots we mean that it's moving across the water at a speed of 20 knots and a knot means a nautical mile per hour it's just a little bit faster than a regular mile per hour or a statute mile per hour but when, when we say the ship's moving at 20 knots, we understand that the frame of reference typically is the water. The ship moves relative to the water. And when we say that a soccer ball is kicked and it's moving at 15 meters per second, we mean that that's the speed of the soccer ball relative to the soccer field. When you kick a soccer ball at the goal, you're not particularly concerned about the rotation of the earth or the motion of the earth around the sun. You want to know if the soccer ball is going to make it to the goal, if it's going to get past this guy. And the speed of the soccer ball, what's important there, is the speed of the ball relative to the soccer field. In some situations though it's the relative speed that matters. Let's take a look at this example of two cars driving along the freeway. You see this car in front here is moving at 55 miles per hour in this direction to the right here and this car in back here is moving at 60 miles per hour in the same direction. So he's gaining on this car and he's gonna bump into him if he doesn't stop. Well, how fast is he gaining on the car? You should be able to see pretty easily that if this car is going 55 and this car is going at 60, then this car in back here is moving 5 miles per hour faster than the one in front. So the gap in between them is being closed at a rate of 5 miles per hour. So that's how fast, that would be the collision speed if this car in back actually caught up and bumped into that car. If no one hit the brakes or sped up or slowed down, this car would hit this this car would hit this one and the impact speed would be five miles per hour. Now that's not a very high impact speed. Most cars have a bumper that's rated to withstand an impact of five miles per hour with no damage to the car. There probably wouldn't be any damage to the people inside either, as long as the bump didn't cause anyone to lose control. And, and cause a bigger wreck. Just a bump at five miles per hour would, um, would probably not be a big deal. This situation is different though. This car is moving to the right at 60 miles an hour. This car is still moving at 55 miles per hour, but now it's moving to the left. This is going to be a head-on collision. If they hit each other, the gap here between these two cars is being closed at the combined speed of 60 plus 55 miles per hour. That adds up to 115 miles per hour. And it's that speed 
the relative speed between the two cars. That's the speed that determines the amount of damage done. In a situation like this, both cars would probably be destroyed, and the chances of uh, fatality to the passengers and drivers inside is very, very high in a situation like this. A head-on collision is much, much more damaging than, than um, just a side swipe or something like that. Even at speeds half what's written here, head-on collisions would be very, very likely to be fatal. And now the point here is that it's not so much the speed of the cars relative to the road that matters, it's the speed of the cars relative to each other. So we're talking about this concept of relative speed or relative velocity, the speed measured relative to some particular frame of reference. And if this situation, if you're about to be in an accident, what you what what's going to matter is not so much your speed relative to the road as it is your speed relative to the other car.